Okay, everybody, I am going to help you get ready for fourth grade math. There were, there were several things in third grade math that you were supposed to learn, so I just want to go over those things together to make sure you are ready to move on to fourth grade. So the first one that we're going to talk about today is addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. I know that's a lot, so we've got a lot to do. We'll just review all four of those concepts. So first, addition. Number one, don't forget to line up your place value. So the ones place needs to be right above the ones place. Second thing you need to know is the answer to an addition problem is called the sum. So if you have a question that says, find the sum of two and two, that means you're going to add two plus two. So the sum is four, okay? So let's go ahead and practice with a little bit harder questions here. We've got 134 plus 739. When I say line up your place value, I mean do it like this. It's easier to see it um, like this than it is to see it sideways. So I would do up and down. So four plus nine is 13. Put your three down there, three to one. One plus three plus three is seven. And seven plus one is eight. So it's 873. 873. All right, and let's move to the next one. All right, 14 plus 955 plus 122. You're going to line up your place value. So the 925 is 14 over 9 will be over by itself, and then the 120 over by itself. And up here, you can put a zero in here if you want, or you can just leave it blank. Doesn't matter. You're going to do four is 11, one plus one is two, plus five is seven, plus two more is nine, and zero plus nine plus one is, eight. so 1,091 would be your answer for that. All right. All right, next thing, subtraction. We have a couple hints for you as well. Again, don't forget to line up your place value and Instead of the answer to an addition problem being the sum, we're gonna talk about the answer to a subtraction problem, which is called the difference. So if the, someone says, what's the difference between 10 and seven, you would do 10 minus seven and you would get three. So the difference is three. Okay, we're going to do some practice problems here. 334, I'm lining up my place value at the hundreds place right above the hundreds place. Place and the ones place above the ones place. So we're going to do four minus eight. If I have four tacos, I can't take away eight tacos because I only have four, right? So we're going to have to borrow, make sure that two makes out of 14. 14 minus eight is six. If I only have two tacos, I can't take away nine. So I'm going to have to borrow again. That becomes 12. 12 minus nine is three. Two minus two is nine. So the answer is 36. 36. All right, this next one, I noticed that a lot of people miss these. These are some of the hardest ones because it has two zeros at the top, so you're actually going to have to borrow twice. So we're going to notice the line up our place value. And that is 800 minus 568. So if I have zero tacos, I can't take away eight, right? But I can't borrow from the next zero because that's also zero. I'm going to make this seven, and then I'm going to make that a 10. But I still can't do zero minus eight, so I'm going to borrow again. That 10 becomes a nine, and that becomes a 10. So now I can do 10 minus eight is two, nine minus six is three, seven minus five is two, and the answer is 232. You're going to have a question like this to practice with, so make sure you understand this concept right here. All right, multiplication review. First of all, what is multiplication? Five times four, that's a multiplication problem. And what does that mean? That means five groups of four, okay? So let's talk about that. Two times three means two groups of three. So two groups, that's two groups, and there are three in each group. So it equals how many? Well, there are six of those, okay? I count all the dots. Two times three means two groups of three, which equals six. 
Okay. Seven times six means seven groups of six, which equals 42. You can have that memorized, or you can draw seven circles and put six dots in each one and count up all the dots. I think it's easier to memorize it because I don't want to count 42 dots, but it's up to you. All right. 40 times seven. Okay. This might look like it's a really big problem, but you can just do four times seven and then add the zero. So four times seven is 28. 28. And then I'm going to put the zero from the 40. And so the answer is actually 280 instead of 28. 280. The reason you can do that is because you can break apart 40 into a 10 and a 4. And so you're doing 4 times 7, 28, and then 28 times 10, which just means you add a 0 to the end of it. So that is why you can do it like that. Okay. I want you to see if you can do this one. What's 3 times 90? Use the same trick that I just showed you. What do you think it is? If you said 270, then you are correct. That's 3 times 9 is 27. And then you put the 0 on the end. All right. Here is something else that is very important for you to know. When you are multiplying, the two numbers that you're multiplying by are called factors. The answer to a multiplication problem is called a product. So 5 times 4, both of those are factors, equals 20. 20 is the product or the answer to a multiplication problem. So let's review. Answer to an addition problem is called the sum. The answer to a subtraction problem is called the difference. The answer to a multiplication problem is called the product. All right, so we are missing a factor here. What would the missing factor be? What times four equals 28? We just did that one a little bit ago. It is seven. It is seven. All right. And what about H times seven is 21. So we have to think what times seven equals 21? Three. Three times seven is 21. So the missing factor is three. All right, last one. We're going over division. I know this is fast. In a division equation, the biggest number comes first, always. Always the biggest number comes first because you are dividing that big number into smaller numbers. So if you had a little number and you divided the little number, you wouldn't end up with a big number. You'd end up with a smaller number than that, okay? So let me explain what I mean. 15 is the biggest number, right? Out of 15, out of five, and out of three, those three numbers, 15 is the biggest one. So in a division problem, that one's going to come first. The 15, the biggest number, is called the dividend. The 5 divided by 5, that's called the divisor. And that equals 3. And the answer to a division problem is called a quotient. It's kind of a funny word. Quotient is the answer to a division problem. Answer to addition, sum. Answer to subtraction, difference. Answer to multiplication, product. Answer to a division problem is the quotient. Okay. So we are missing a divisor here. 49 divided by what equals seven? 49 divided by what equals seven? Let me give you a hint. These two numbers multiplied together equal 49. Okay, so if you're trying to solve this, you can say 49 divided by t equals 7, or you could switch those two numbers and say 49 divided by 7 equals t. Well, what is 49 divided by 7? 7, which means t must equal 7. These two numbers right here, t and 7, t equals 7, so really 7 and 7. If you multiply those two numbers together, you will get the biggest number right here first number in the division problem, 49. Okay, let's try that one more time. We are missing a divisor. 32 divided by t equals eight, which means again, eight times t equals 32. So you can do 32 divided by t equals eight, or you can say 32 divided by eight equals t. 
Well, what is 32 divided by eight? It's four, which means T equals four. Okay, notice 32 is the biggest number, so it comes first. 32 is the biggest number, so it comes first in a division problem. Okay, now we are missing the dividend. The dividend is the first number. So is that the biggest number or the smallest number? It's the biggest number, which means these look like they're really hard, but if you think about it this way, I promise they're easy. This number times this number equals two. So what's two times eight? 16. So if you had 16 tacos and you divided them into groups of eight, you would have eight or you would have two tacos in each group. Let me say that one more time. If you had 16 tacos total and you divided them into eight groups, each group would have two tacos. 16 divided by eight equals two. Notice to find that dividend, all I did was multiply the two numbers at the end to get the biggest number. So I'm gonna have you try to find the dividend of this one. Right here, y divided by four equals nine. See if you can solve it. Y divided by four equals nine. Remember, you can just do nine times four equals y. Division and multiplication are just backwards. Multiplication goes this way. If you want to do multiplication on a division problem, you just go the other way. You could write it like this. Nine times four equals 36, 36 is what y equals. So that is your answer right there. Remember, multiplication and division are just each other backwards, okay? Addition and subtraction, please make sure you line up those, those place values. Your ones place should be right above the ones place. You don't wanna mix that up, okay? And the answer to an addition problem is the sum. The answer to a subtraction problem is the difference. The answer to a multiplication problem is a product. And the answer to a division problem is called the quotient. All right, there is a worksheet that you can practice to see if you've learned all the things that you need to learn in third grade for multiplication, division, addition, and subtraction. Good luck with that, and I will see you in the next video.